How are you, Steve? Doing good. Steve, at least I understand uh, you describe yourself as the adoptive father of this baby. <laughs> so uh, Because Mr. you've been Schmuzer, working on this uh, for a long time, right? He said it's his baby, so it's my job to bring this to maturity. So that's uh, the, the chief engineer for this car, right? Exactly. Honda Clarity, this is the first car of a series of cars that uh, Honda is going to bring into market. And this one is already in, in uh, on sale, right? Deliveries have already begun. Uh, uh, toward the end of December. Okay, it's a very special car, and this technology has been on the on the industry already available for a long time. But like there haven't been many examples of, uh, and as you can tell, it's very very quiet. <laughs> it was running, but you couldn't hear anything because obviously, completely electric and runs on hydrogen. So, hydrogen technology in cars has been available for a long time, but. Uh, I guess the techno the infrastructure or the pricing structure has hasn't been there yet so far. That's right. And you know how they say every marathon begins with a first step. Yeah. And that's really what the case is. So back in O2 when we first delivered some cars to customers, we had to help bring hydrogen to those customers. Yeah. A station network was developed, which is really kind of a you could almost say test stations and R and D research phase. This is an all new level of both vehicle technology and hydrogen station network. To because the two have to be back hand, hand with hand. That's right, and now because automakers report their plans forward, the state can count on how many stations to fund and build, and so kind of has broken the old chicken and egg syndrome, because yeah. now there's certainty. We know what has to come first, stations have to come first, and then we can deliver it to customers. And uh, the reason we're in California is because California is the mo most advanced in that sense, right? Absolutely. The, uh, California is where really the focus has been in the United States of, of deploying fuel cell electric vehicles, deploying a network of stations. Today, you can drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco in one of these vehicles. There's a network of stations along the route. And so it's really become normalized for the first time. So let's talk specifically about this car, the Honda Clarity, 2017 Honda Clarity. What's the range, what's the process of charging, and what can people expect when they get into the car? So this car has an EPA certified range of 366 miles. This makes it the longest range zero emission vehicle certified in the United States today. And the fueling time uh, of a hydrogen fuel cell car is like three to five minutes. So like almost regular like as a gas car. Just like a gasoline yeah. car, three to five minutes, fill the vehicle, good for another 366 miles. But the, the way you're uh, introducing it to the market here in California is only through a leasing program, right? It's a lease program and you know, the vast majority of electric drive vehicles today are leased, in many cases, over 80%. And the fact is, our uh, we have this new dealer network, six dealers in Southern California, six in Northern California, and each of these dealers has a waiting list of customers. So lease only is uh, not an impediment to yeah. the deployment of the cars today. And uh, what's, what's the pricing uh, for, the, for the leasing? How, how much does it cost? Sure, it's uh, three sixty nine a month, um, about 2800 down. It includes 20,000 miles per year in that lease. Okay. The car is HOV lane Which is capable. always a concern with the lease, right? The amount of miles that you can drive. Exactly. Again, we want to eliminate any barriers to market acceptance. But because it goes in the carpool lane, those drivers tend to put more miles on the car. We're also including up to $15,000 of fuel because the price of the fuel is a little bit higher than gasoline So it's included. Today. You don't have to pay ever for, the, for recharging well, during the time of the lease? Well, so well, up to fifteen thousand. Up to fifteen thousand dollars, which really, depending on how efficiently people drive, will really cover them from fifteen to twenty thousand miles per year. Okay. So pretty much aligning with the annual miles. So as in any electric car, I mean, the only difference here is that it's like powered by hydrogen, but the, the dynamics and the way the energy gets drained from the battery is more or less the same as in other electric cars. It, it means like if I drive like this fast all the time, I'm gonna drain the battery much faster than I go on a steady uh, pace all the time. Well, it, it is energy, so whether it's electrons <laughs> in a battery, gasoline in your tank, yeah. or hydrogen, the more aggressively you drive, the, the less efficient it will be. But this is also a hybrid-like vehicle, and that under deceleration, 
and braking, you're regenerating electricity, putting it into a storage battery, and then using it in acceleration. So again, to get EPA certification of 69 miles per uh, kilogram, uh, mile per gallon yeah. equivalent in uh, city driving is outstanding. That's a very efficient drive system. Let's talk about the other aspect of the car, which is design, technology, and those kind of things, because for a while, these cars with alternative uh, powertrains were like, not normal looking, like they were like kind of different, let's say. But this one is uh, completely like a normal car. You, If you didn't tell people this is a hydrogen powered car, people probably wouldn't know, right? Absolutely, and, and you know, that was the design parameter. So when uh, uh, Mr. Shimizu talks about, you know, this being his baby, that was one of the design elements was to normalize it, make it just like any other Honda that people would come to expect. And the key to that was to take all these separate fuel cell components, downsize them, put them all together, and put the entire powertrain under the hood of the car. This is a very large interior space. Well, almost equivalent to uh, the court. Uh, right. it, it, the rear uh, rear seating is actually larger than an Accord. Oh, wow. So the leg room is greater than in a Honda Accord. It's a five passenger car. So it's everything one would expect. You drove the car and it's a very flat handling, great suspension, yeah. great uh, uh And even has a sport mode, which uh, I mean, it's not a sports car, but I mean like it being an electric car, all the power is there immediately. Like. You can go, what's the zero to 60 official number? We haven't put a zero to 60 out there, but it's very good acceleration, yeah. leveraging the great torque of an electric drive system. Yeah, we had to pass a trailer uh, on the way in, and it really has all the power that you need when, when you need it. Uh, that, sure, that, that and, kind of and situation. sport mode makes it more responsive to the throttle and provides even greater decel under, uh, uh, regen under deceleration and braking. So it's uh, putting more energy back in the back. Going back to the, Origin of like all that uh, initial idea of this car. This is the first one of the series, right? We're gonna. I understand in New York we're gonna announce the plug-in hybrid and the full electric, but there's more to come in uh, Honda, right? Well, so now the Clarity platform really shows Honda's desire to offer choice to customers. So with choice based on regional differences in energy or people's preferences and needs, they can have a Clarity with either. Hudson fuel cell, of course limited to where stations are, California today. Uh, a plug-in hybrid, which will be 50 state distribution through 100% of our dealers. That runs on both gasoline and electric. And of course, a battery electric vehicle with the Clarity uh, electric. So people can have the choice and leverage uh, the powertrain that they want. Again, you started working on this uh, project or this kind of technology a long, long time uh, for Honda, and uh, now it's seeing it now in reality. I mean, you're one of the main experts in the country for this. What What do you think is going to happen? I mean, you said we're going to go from this from like a hundred now to thousands, but eventually, this is the future, right? Well, it's one of the future technologies for uh, sustainable transportation. Y you know, and and. You know, recognizing how long I've been doing this. This is like a dream come true for yeah. a lot of people. People that have worked very hard to bring this technology to fruition, both at the vehicle and the station level. So the advances continue to be made, and that's reflected in this vehicle right here. A little bit more about the infrastructure. Uh, how many stations are there now? How many are coming soon? And like, what's, I mean, sure. what do you think you're gonna see in five, 10 years? So the state of California is committed to the first hundred. There's already organizations and groups that are putting together meetings to say uh, 101 to 1,000. In other words, yeah. we are already thinking forward to bring uh, the next wave of hydrogen stations to the public. I chair an organization uh, called H2USA, and we're modeling where the stations need to be outside of California. So our mission statement is how many stations, where, and when. We work with some of the uh, research organizations and Department of Energy. The National Renewable Energy Lab in uh, Golden, Colorado is a key part of that. They have lots of resource resources for modeling demographics of markets and using things like, call it surrogate information, yeah. hybrid electric vehicles, CNG vehicles, plug-ins, wherever those are showing pockets of activity, is a potential. So it's going to be the demand and supply. It's going to be like a dynamic thing. The progress of this is going to be 
As more people want these cars, more infrastructure is going to develop. That's right. California today, Northeast states tomorrow, and then we can connect the dots in other regional markets around the United States. Exactly. So we recharged this morning uh, we, when we started the drive, and the uh, maximum range was about 250 when the full tank. And that now we're like 210, so we still have a long, long way to go before we run out of hydrogen. Well, when I drove uh, literally uh, VIN number one, yeah. uh, uh, early production car from Los Angeles up to the Santa Barbara station opening, I drove here and drove all the way back and didn't even bother refueling. That's so great. the range of the vehicle now, it just moves it to a normalized Different level, level yeah. over 300 miles, and now people say, okay, that's just That's like my gasoline car. Excellent. We're there. Well, thank you very much for your time. We're going to keep enjoying the 210 miles <laughs> tank, okay? Thank you. Thank you.